Hello, good evening, Guyana. Um, welcome to our fourth episode of Step by Step Parenting Program. Tonight, I'm your hostess. I'm Rolanda Campbell, and um, the program tonight, the topic will be focusing on parenting adolescents through their physical and sexual development phase. Um, this program is brought to you with the kind compliments of the Child Rights Alliance. It's an initiative advocating for strengthening national collaboration for the prevention of violence and abuse against children. Um, tonight, it's my pleasure to, in, you know, to introduce our panelists tonight. We have a group of young people that are very professional in this field, and I'm sure that they will be able to educate the Guyanese public somehow on, you know, especially more significantly parents and how they can address the issue of physical and sexual development in their adolescent children. So I want to invite all our Guyanese to tune in tonight, and um, I'm sure some question must be answered but for you tonight. All right, so I'm going to start now to introduce our panel, our panelists tonight. Um, I'm going to give them a chance to tell us their name, the organization they're from, and their role and responsibility in their organization. So I'll start to my direct left, to my direct right, sorry, at Miss Scott. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Yeah. My name is Sarah Scott. I'm a volunteer with SRHR Adventures, that's Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights Adventures, that was formed by Dr. Patrice Douglas. And so I'm a volunteer, and what I normally do is that I would give talks on mm -hmm. different aspects of sexual and reproductive health and rights. All right, thank you, Miss Scott. Great, uh, thank you for having us uh, this evening. My name is Kobe Smith. I'm a youth rep on the board of directors of the Ghana Responsible Parenthood Association, which I must say is the number one uh, provider and an, <laughs> an, an enabler of sexual and reproductive health and rights services uh, in this country. Um, to be more specific, I'm the vice president of the youth arm, uh, the youth advocacy movement, and I basically organize and mobilize young people to do the tremendous work of education and empowerment. Okay. So. Excellent, thank you. Ms. Watt. Hey, good evening everyone. Uh, thanks for having me here on your program this evening. Um, my name is um, Nicole Wall. I'm um, employed by Childlink as the forensic interviewer and the counselor in Region 3. So my role and responsibility basically is to work with um, children that are experiencing various forms of abuse along with their families to help that child and their um, family to overcome um, whatever challenges they're facing with and to better um, you know contribute to society in a positive way mm -hmm. all right thank you so much all right so um tonight since our emphasis is focused mainly on parenting adolescent um through their physical and sexual development phase we know that change is inevitable especially when it comes to development of a human being right um but more specifically we're focusing mainly on adolescents tonight and so we have um a budding doctor among us that's dr scott <laughs> we'll say Dr. Scott for tonight. Um, maybe you can help us to understand, especially more significantly as it relates to puberty when they're now making that transition, right, um, into maturity. Now, some persons might even ask, um, how come um, a parent doesn't know what are some of the physical changes that their, their child goes through, but a lot of parents are not educated on this aspect. And as such, most of these children go to, they're educated mainly among their own peers. And so you might be able to shed some light on this specific topic as it relates to the physiological development of an adolescent. So, Ms. Scott, can you help the public to understand exactly what are some of the things that they can look for? Okay, no problem. So, basically, puberty is that stage in a uh -huh. child's life uh -huh. where they begin their development. Yeah. into adulthood mm -hmm. and so what happens is that the brain stimulates certain chemical messengers known as hormones okay. for the males that is testosterone for the females that's estrogen uh -huh. and these hormones is what well these hormones they cause 
yeah. um, certain changes. Mm -hmm. So initially, what you will see, um, generally for both males and females, mm -hmm. you would see they will begin to sprout pubic hair okay. or an axillary hair in the yes. aggregates, uh -huh. right? You would also have. Um, they would also have a change in their body odor. It will take a more adult odor. Yeah. Right. Following that, for particularly for the females, mm -hmm. they would have development of their breasts. Okay. And also, they would have the onset of their menstrual cycle. Uh -huh. Right. The first one is known as menarche. So you would have your first menstrual period. Uh -huh. For the males now, they would have enlargement of their testes mm -hmm. and enlargement of the penis as well. Yes. Right. They would also. They would also have um, changes. They, they would also have uh, their growth spurt for mm -hmm. both males and females. They would have growth in the bones, mm -hmm. in the muscles. Yes. You know, and for the women in particular, the females in particular, yes. because you know they're becoming yes. young women. Uh -huh. They would have widening of the hips. Take uh -huh. a more what we would say feminine body shape, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the young men, mm -hmm. they would um, increase in bulk and height. And in addition to that, I should also mention the age in which this occurs. For the girls on average, mm -hmm. it's from nine to between the ages of nine and 13, but it could happen as early as from ages seven and a half to eight, wow. right? Okay. And for the young men, it could happen a little later than that, right? From ages nine, um, going on to 15. So that is basically what puberty is in a nutshell, in the simplest terms possible. I'm happy you shed some light on that because, um, you know, many times we hear parents saying when they see their, especially girl, child developing in the hip and areas, those areas, they say somehow they, They've already been sexually active, so I'm so happy that it's coming from a medical professional. Um, Mr. Smith, I know that um, your organization handles some aspect of um, the medical area also, so you might be able to help us also understand what are some of, uh, since you are a youth advocate, I'm sure that you have a lot of interaction with youth. Yeah. So I'm sure you might be able to shed some light too and, you know, educate us a little on what um, you would have noticed in your organization working with youths. Yes. Um, so thanks again. Um, well, basically, when we interact with young people, we have what's called the Comprehensive Sexuality Education Program okay. that we currently have in schools. Um, it's really pretty much a youth-focused, gender-focused mm -hmm. um, approach to yeah. sexuality education mm -hmm. because we've realized that this um, health and family life education program that the Ministry of Education is implementing, um, we find it to be a little bit inadequate okay. where it does not tell the truth of the matter. Right. And so comprehensive sexuality in a true sense, it goes beyond the biological. It goes to issues like contraception and, and reproductive health and rights and yes. services and all of that. Yes. Um, because we really understand, we really find and understand that young people don't really get the information that they're supposed to have at home. Exactly. Um, and so we find it as stakeholders in the whole biz business of education yes. is that we, we see ourselves as, as having a role to play exactly. in educating young people. So we bring comprehensive sexuality education to schools right. um, where we delve into the e issues to tell young people hey it's normal uh -huh. um, but really and truly it's normal to have the attraction to have sex but it's kind of wrong to have sex at such an early age yes. at such an early stage mm -hmm. so what we do is that we tell young people because more than likely what has been happening in our society mm -hmm. and what we've really we've really done our young people and our children an injustice yeah. because i think when they go through this whole phase of having hormone changes and adolescence um we sort of tell them not to have sex right. and we, we we have this abstinence only approach which is fine yes but you cannot have the abstinence only approach without giving them the information to say exactly. hey sex is going to happen or you're going to think about it but if it comes to the situation where you are going to have sex mm -hmm. there's a condom yes. and this is how you use it i don't think that a father is going to want to show his daughter how to it, it might be a <laughs> bit uncomfortable 
Yeah. But the reality of the matter is, is that we must tell our young people that these are the options because they are going to meet friends. They exactly. are going to go there. Exactly. And they might as well fall, uh, you know, be swallowed up into the pitfalls of teenage pregnancy and pre pressure and all those sort of things yes. um, because of lack of information. Exactly. So GRP is really is about education and ensuring that our young people are empowered with the education and the services because services, you know, they're really important. And very yeah. important. I'm happy that you said that because a lot of times um, and in, in Guyanese culture, you find that the, the topic of sex is very taboo in many homes. Mm -hmm. And so you find sometimes some parents might even address the topic as it and um, you're not allowed to have sex. But I'm happy that you, you said that because a lot of parents lack the knowledge of your understanding that even if they don't tell them, and they refuse to allow them to have that access outside, they're going to get it through technology. Mm -hmm. And you want to know that you have that relationship with your child enough that you can sit with them and let them know what sex is like, what are some of the consequences of sex, what are some of the things that they should expect that sex is for persons who are responsible and so on. So, sure. you know, I'm happy that you said that a lot of children, we have indeed done our children a lot of injustice in our society. I'm happy that thank you so much, Mr. Smith. Um, Ms. Wall, you, you would have worked with some parents. Um, would you ha have um, at any time would have encountered sex, sexual development with clients and so on as, as it relates to speaking with parents? Have you had your challenges there as it relates to parents really grasping the concept of what are some simple things to look for in the, the physical or your sexual development in their, in their teen? Maybe you can shed some light on that. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say um, the first thing when I interact with parents that I would normally say is actually um, when a child is now entering into the stage of adolescence, that yes. child is now experiencing changes in his or her body. <laughs> and so they're now becoming aware of these changes and um like you said in our society there are a lot of things that were taboo yeah back then i'm mm. I, for me i'm now seeing parents that are actually talking more because of shows such as this one that we're having and they're being educated right. more on how to go about but mm -hmm. i have had parents in my office who had some challenges talking to their child because of the changes they found it really strange yes. and so it wasn't something that was happening in their home as a child growing up and so they found it really hard to actually sit and talk to their um, child or children about these changes and what are some of the things you should look for what are some of the choices and decisions that you should make yeah. you know it's very hard when um, you're entering into that adolescent stage for the child and for the parent because yeah, the too. parent now have that difficulty yes. in, in talking about certain things. The child is now, you know, um, feeling a bit strange sitting and talking about sex with, with, with mom or talking about sex with dad. I remember it as a child growing up, you know, um, if there is some form of sexual contact on the television and my parents are sitting there, you have to leave the room <laughs> yeah, and go to bed that, or that you have to that's the thing cover in your home. eye yeah, exactly. until it's finished. But no longer can we do that with our children because we don't want our children to go out there and to be exposed to the wrong set of information. So I believe and I encourage my parents that come to me to actually sit and talk about it. It's important that parents have these um, sort of family discussions with their adolescent yeah. children. And that's why it's so important too that parents should have that open communication mm -hmm. with their child. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, like I've said before, traditions and culture have, you know, stagnated us in many ways because the parent might not have had that experience with their parents. So it's even hard for them to, to have that conversation with their child. But you know, it's a change in society and parents need to be abreast with what's happening. Um, well, my second question is that even while we would have covered the, the sexual and physical development of adolescents, we want to look at some of the effects if these things aren't addressed. And this is more specifically to our parents. Um, you know, it's, it, you, you have some sig significant effects on adolescents. It's a time when they're confused, identity, they're searching mm -hmm. for identity and all of that, and they're going to go wherever... Um, they see fit or they feel accepted and sometimes that's not in the home. Um, if some of these, you know, changes are unaddressed, um, what are some of the harmful effects that may occur, not only to the child, but in the family? What do you think? 
any anyone. Yeah. Um, so I can jump sure, in. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I think mm -hmm. s simply um, mm -hmm. when we don't uh, understand as parents, well, I'm not a parent, I'm just saying we generally. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> when we don't understand the issues uh, pertaining to, you know, a girl, mm -hmm. you know, expanding her hips and so mm -hmm. on. And we don't talk to her to say, hey, this is what's have happening. She goes out there, she gets that exposure. Yes. Um, unprotected sex. Right. Um, you have HIV, <clears throat> AIDS, and other STIs. Two, um, two. Pregnancy. Exactly. Um, and those are significant hindrances to the development of our young girls. Because really and truly, it's an issue of human rights. Because when you get pregnant at 15, at 13, um, you have to drop out of school. Yeah. And that in itself is a human rights concern because as human beings, you have a right to access exactly. education. That's so true. I think for Child's young women, right women they're, they're, mm -hmm. they are so vulnerable uh, to this whole issue. And, and, and if we don't like, give them the information, exactly. um, they are just left to, to the risks and the yeah. consequences. Exactly. I think that's the full fundamental part of it. Yeah, and um, one of the things too, I, I, I've done some work with young people in the past and the simple things that they're not educated on, it, it amazes me. Like, um, mm -hmm. we hear about AIDS a lot. In our time, we heard about it a lot. And you, you're, you're afraid to even go near a young man or, or you know, things like that. But um, some, I was appalled. One time I did a group session with some young people, and they actually thought you could have gotten AIDS by a touch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and... Um, even in while speaking with them, some of them they really didn't understand the significance of what how that disease can change your life. And you would ask them, Do you have this conversation with your parent? No, Miss, my mother don't talk to me about sex. Sex in my home. First thing they're gonna think I doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Yeah, yeah. And so they they, they they left out there very vulnerable, like you said. And so, you know, there's so many other harmful um effects that may occur. Um, Ms. Scott, do you have, um, based on your field, um, let's talk about some of the, the, I mean, you've worked with children and, and well, you've studied and the medical area and so on. So maybe you can help us understand also from the perspective of a medical professional, what are some of the effects if these things are not addressed at home that you might see? Well, the majority of them would have been already touched mm -hmm. um, upon by Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. um, and then to just add, a lot of them, uh, if not addressed, right. you know, a lot of young people, they would go to their friends, they would go to yes. other persons who are not educated about these things. Right. Um, a lot of them think that HIV is the only STI yeah. that it's they true. can get. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't, and they feel that, oh, if I just use a condom, I can just protect myself from mm -hmm. HIV, mm -hmm. not realizing that we have other sexually right. transmitted infections that exactly. cannot, um, that you cannot be protected against yes. by using a condom, right? Like, for example, we have the HPV campaign going on for vaccination purposes. Yes, and, I'm happy you know, the con A condom will not protect you. Right. Right? Yeah. Uh, from 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 um from getting genital warts, for mm -hmm. example. Exactly. So there is a there are a lot of other things. Um, another thing I would like to add, mm -hmm. um, that may not that generally speaking is that during adolescence, it's a time when you learn about respecting your body and That's respecting right. other people's bodies. Yes. Um, and so. During this time, if you don't address certain um, things right. with these changes, um, young persons will not know how to act appropriately yeah. when it comes to sexual things. Right. They need to learn about things like consent, that mm -hmm. no means no, to yeah. both the men and I, w um, I won't alienate the females as well, because yes. females as well should know. Exactly. Um, that, you know, sometimes a guy may just not be interested in certain things. So and just, exactly. If, I think um, if, if I can uh, pick sure, up, I think she, uh, Ms. Scott was talking about uh, the whole respecting, and I think she was trying to speak about body image. Yeah. And just to divert the conversation a bit from, you know, the sexual, f you know, phase, I think mm. we could go to physical. Yeah. Um, because really and truly, this whole process, it's about, you know, physical change too. That too. Um, and if we don't, and if we don't tell young girls and young boys, hey, when you reach, you know, fourteen, you get 
here like me yeah. or a young girl you know you get hair on your arm and uh, mm -hmm. you know pubic area and so on because if you don't tell them that this is normal and for them to build that you know self-esteem and, and self-confidence mm -hmm. um they would be you know mocked and bullied by exactly. by by, by exactly. peers and so on i remember two days ago we were at the child song secondary school mm -hmm. an incredible school with incredible young people and we were doing you know our sexual uh, cse session and we were talking about body image sexuality and media mm -hmm. um and we and, you know we, we included adolescents and, and everything yeah and I told them that that was the best session. I've been doing this session for the past two years. Yeah. And that's the best session I've ever done. Because we were talking about body image. And this young, we were talking about, you know, your experiences and body image, if you were body shamed and so yes. on. Because it's adolescence we were talking about. That's right. And this young girl, she, she stood up and she said, um, I have my experience. Okay. And, you know, I'm growing, uh, I'm changing. Mm -hmm. But some people think that I am... I forgot the, she said, some people f say that I am a monster or, or a monkey. Oh, because of the, that. the heat. Okay. And the young girl, and, and the girl started to cry, wow. right? And when she did that, her colleague next to her, she started to cry too. Okay. Because she was bothered by the shame too, because the, the process. Experience, and yes. both of them started to, to, to yes. cry. So then and there, I, 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 I thought to myself that it's, we have an issue at hand. Right. We have an issue where, um, you know, young people are bullying young people because of, you know, their changes. Yeah. And they don't understand that this thing is normal. So. And it's kind of like immature yes. to, you know, <laughs> mock somebody because of changes. So it's an issue that needs to be addressed, I would so, say. Nicely. So I want to jump in there because um, that's when young people are actually becoming self-conscious. Mm -hmm. And um, they, if, if not um, taught about it the right way, they they can feel embarrassed mm -hmm. and so it goes right back to the home where we have to have that open conversation to uh discuss um these changes with our um with our children and you know i remember um growing up i heard the most foolish thing that when you now turn a young lady you have to stop playing with boys and yes, if a young man a touch one. you yes. you can become pregnant and you know these are the myths we hear and so we still have these things going around yeah. so it goes right back to the home it goes back to parenting it goes back to where the, it takes a community or a village to to raise a child because you might not have a, a role model in your home but you might have it with some leader in the community who can help address these issues maybe in a church you group you know in in a church setting yeah. and so these are things that we we need to discuss and i trust tonight that we have people from the churches that are listening That's right. to us faith-based organization mm -hmm. we have parents that are listening to us we have uh teachers that are listening to us and social They're workers important. because yes. we all need to work together to help our young people exactly yeah mm -hmm. exactly. and um one of the, the to add also, um, a lot of religious homes, they have problems in terms of, you know, addressing these issues. They, they might talk about it, but they say, you know, this is a Christian home. You're not allowed to have sex then. And mm -hmm. so don't let me hear that you ever had sex. And, and many times they mm -hmm. refuse to even explain to the child why, why, some, of the, why some of these rules are being set and so on, if, if you want to call them house rules. Um, mm -hmm. You need to explain to them, um, and this goes for single parent home so because I, I'm I while you were speaking I'm thinking about a single parent father mm -hmm. and a house full of girls mm -hmm. how, how <laughs> that might be a little challenge for him but you know this 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 applies to all ho types of household um, um, my, my next question would be um when is it appropriate for adolescents to be attracted to each other now this this might be a little tickly mm -hmm. one based on the fact that some um some young well i've worked with a lot of children and they would say miss is it okay for me to be attracted to boys and i said yes honey it's okay for you to be attracted boy oh thank you because my mother <laughs> don't feel so <laughs> you know um. I, yeah and and you know it's like a challenge to them because sometimes they even say i say oh, okay have you had that conversation with your mom to say you know mommy yes there's this boy i can't have that conversation with her miss she think it's a sin for me to even like a boy yeah. for me to even look 
look at a boy so i want to ask the question to all the panelists and you know anybody can come in at this time when do you think it's appropriate for adolescents to be attracted to each other? I mean, everybody might have their own experiences because yeah. you might hear that. <laughs> I had a crush on that sir in primary school and, you know, things like that. But yeah. um, when do you feel it's appropriate? Let's have the male go first. <laughs> of of, of <laughs> yes. course, of course. Um, I think firstly and fundamentally, we need, to, we need to understand that, you know, whether you're a child, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, we're all... We're human beings, but we're emotional beings. Uh -huh. So you will be attracted to people. Exactly. Uh, I will like her, or you know, a yeah. girl will like him, or yes. you know. Um, but <laughs> going a step further, where are you going to talk about sex yeah. at, at ten mm -hmm. or sex at twelve and thirteen? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We don't support that. Okay. Because it comes back to you know you're not ready you know right. physically mentally you 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 know you you're not ready to to for sex at a thirteen year old just not yeah um so attraction is 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 okay because it's natural you know right. you, you have emotions for exactly. people but if we're gonna go forward to to say a, a twelve year old having sex with a twelve year old mm -hmm. we're not I personally would not uh, support that yeah um, because I personally think that you know There's you're not ready exactly. for that but I think attraction fundamentally it's natural. Yeah. yeah. So yes, I fully agree with that sentiment because basically there's no right time to be <laughs> attracted to another individual. The fact of the matter is that as an adolescent, as you mm -hmm. grow up, you will become attracted to other people. Exactly. The problem is, or the issue is, how you act on that yeah, attraction. That's it. Right? Mm -hmm. How you act on it. Um. How you handle um sex sexual behavior towards you and how you handle your behavior towards other people exactly. as a result of that attraction so that basically is the issue the appropriateness of your actions as a result of that yes attraction True. exactly miss mm -hmm. was so it's for me it's okay for an, an adolescent to be attractive to another individual however like um my colleague was saying is how you act because sex comes with responsibility and yeah. most times i tell my teenagers that you know it comes with responsibility and it's sad to say that most times that it's the females who are more affected um, affected by it because if you get pregnant then you have to drop out of school i know they're now having the um the teenage mothers return to school but then you would have wasted so much time and your classmates would have gone on with um with life and everything and you have to return to school now so mm -hmm. it's a lot of responsibilities and i uh, responsibility and so that's why i always say that's why sex was only created for adults who are responsible to deal with the responsibility that comes with um, indulging in sexual activities. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Wall. And now we're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be back in a minute. Thank you. If you've got questions, we've got answers about sexual and reproductive health. Come find out the facts at the Guyana Responsible Parenthood Association, GRPA. Clinic services include HIV testing, contraceptives, STI screening, counseling, and youth-friendly space. Visit GRPA, 70 Quamina Street, South Cummingsburg, telephone 225-3286 or 225-6493. My body, my rights. Be the boss of your body. Be a body boss. All right, thank you and welcome back. Um, let me remind you, our program for tonight is our fourth episode of the Step-by-Step -step Parenting Program. Welcome back. So, um, I'm happy that we shared on that aspect in terms of we, we were talking about um, when it's it appropriate for an adolescent to be attracted to the other sex. No, since... Um, the topic for tonight is we're going to edu we're educating parents on recognizing these physiological and sexual development phase in in the adolescent. So I want to target our parents more specifically now. Um, how do you think it is that parents can help their children through the this transitional phase? Some parents are so frustrated they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Some because not all teens are the same. Some might just they're, they're easily pressured by peers, and as such, they go off and they get their education there, and that's where when mommy come now, mommy old time-ish. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that's a challenge in its own way. So how is it that you feel that um, parents will be able to help their children through this transitional period? I'm going to start with Miss Wall. Um, you've done a lot of, well, you've done a lot of parenting work. Um, 
how is it that you're able to get that message over to help parents understand how to deal with this transition in their, their, their teens life? Okay, first, there's a theorist who I can refer to by the name of Balby, mm -hmm. who spoke about the attachment theory. And the attachment theory I want parents to know is not just for the infant stage. Mm -hmm. And so when the child is developed at a certain stage, you allow that child to do what he or she wants and make their own decision. You should still have that form of attachment with your child still be able to um, communicate and still show that love and support mm -hmm. for that child because oftentimes we find in homes that the older siblings are the ones who are left to take on the adult responsibility yes. and so the relationship from parent and child is actually um, breaking away gradually and then that child now finds more time um, and gathers more information outside of the home um, Another thing I want to say is that um, ch uh, children need to have more support mm -hmm. from from parents. I know in our society that um, it's all about providing, at most times, food, clothing, and shelter, and mm -hmm. for some families, a good and the best education. Um, then you find there's no love there. There's no form of support. We think that if we provide food, clothing, and shelter and a good education, that's mm -hmm. enough. But the main thing that is missing from a lot of our homes is that sort of love and affection. I've had clients in my office when I say, you know, um, give your mom a hug or give dad a hug or mm -hmm. do a group family hug. Mm -hmm. It's really strange. Nobody is moving. Everybody is just sitting there and you have to kind of keep prompting and then the child would say because i would ask after how does it feel it feels strange we have never done family hugs the father mm -hmm. would even say it feels okay but it's really strange because as a child growing up i've never had that sort of embracement and that sort of love i was taught how to be so macho and mm -hmm. you know we don't do hugs and all of yeah. that and so that sort of um that sort of feeling and communication transferred over to his um, family life, mm -hmm. you know. So I want to say parents need to be of more support to their children. You know, I say um, don't allow your child to sit in a room and just do the homework alone. Go how was school today are you are you getting to let let me see i know somebody might be sitting at home and thinking but what if i'm a parent that, and and i can't read how yeah. will i be able to be involved okay so when you're making dinner call your daughter into the mm -hmm. kitchen and say okay put out um put out the teacups help me make the tea and we are mm -hmm. having a conversation how was school today is everything yeah. okay w what did you do at school today you know be of more support have more communication going find more time to talk i always say to families it doesn't have it doesn't have to be where you have so much money that you have to go what about going and buy an ice cream cone which is about what a hundred and something dollars and mm -hmm. you sit and you have a conversation going with your child. All right. Mr. Smith, do you have a Yes. Um, I think we need to have resocialization, yeah. you know, in, in, in parenting, resocialization, and the way we culture our, our boys and our girls and how yeah. we educate them. Um, and if I say that parents, you know, have reservations uh, in terms of educating, you know, their, their girls and their boys, um, you know, about adolescence and the stages and so on, you can start at, 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 at a younger age where you're giving them a bath you say hey this is the vagina you know yeah. clean vagina yes. clean you know simple <laughs> yeah. um but apart but it, it comes back to breaking down the information simpler yeah um because really and truly this sex talk and this whole adolescence thing it makes people uncomfortable yeah you know but parents must understand that you would have gone through the same thing so this exactly. thing that your daughter your son's going through yeah. is not new yeah. you've been through it so you know how to cope with exactly. it i would hope yes. you know um <laughs> yes. because based on experiences in addition to that i would want to encourage parents you know fathers mothers examine explore uh the issues around the world um it was 2013 we had the state of the world population report by the united nations population fund and that report stated that ghana has the second highest rate of teenage pregnancy uh in the caribbean and latin Amer and latin america mm -hmm. with 99 out of every 1,000 girls uh, becoming pregnant. Wow. Um, that in itself yeah. is supposed to be motivation exactly. to ensure that your girls 
um, have the information and have the education. You know, they Correct. don't have to go to school, to. but you say, hey, you know, this is what you do. You know, this is what not to do. Exactly. Um, so you explore all those things, um, yes. the issues of the world, and also your experiences to ensure mm -hmm. um, that your daughter and your son uh, have the information. Exactly. That's my encouragement. Yeah, so to help um, a child during this process, mm -hmm. the first thing that a parent needs to do is to educate themselves properly and thoroughly That's on the I'm whole process mm -hmm. of puberty. Yes. Read, see what the changes are, see what is expected because not, as you would have said earlier, mm -hmm. every child is different. Yes. We have some early starters, we have some late bloomers. Exactly. Um, if you could share your experience with your child because it may be that you know, there's a genetic aspect to it. You may mm -hmm. have been a late bloomer. You could say, well, you know, don't worry. Um, I was a late bloomer that too, and you can help comfort. them exactly. with that. Um, you, need, then you need to pay attention, pay keen attention to your child during this, pe this period as well. And yeah. so, you know, con as Miss Wall would have said, communication is key. Um, because um, I'm backtracking a bit to something that Mrs. Smith would have said earlier about body image issues yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm. um, they lead to some unhealthy behaviors um, um, because, you know, traumatization they can develop depression exactly. as a result of all of this. Yes. Um, if they're being body shamed and so on, they can, it can lead to eating disorders, that too. right? And what you should be doing is paying attention to your child's health, you know, yeah. encourage them, you know, exercise, eat right, right, and so on, so they don't lead to, you know, unhealthy behaviors yeah. such as these. So basically, you're to, the parents, parents should educate themselves of, uh, about every step of the journey. So can I'm I just add, okay. I know we've been talking a lot about the physical aspect, but adolescent development is also um, an emotional aspect. It's also the way that they start to think right. and not just the, the outer appearance. And oftentimes um, we are having clashes with parents and their, um, and their adolescent child yeah. or children because of the way they start to think, you yeah. know, having their own opinions. And so um, there, there's clashes there because it goes back to how we were raised again yeah. you know I'm the parent I say this and this is this how is it, is. it is and <laughs> you know we, we we weren't taught that we had a voice as a child exactly. as well and so we're having those clashes so I'm saying to parents you know there might be a parent and I, I feel like if there might be a parent out there I know Dr. Scott said you know get information and Dr. read Scott. and we have <laughs> sorry yes, <laughs> <Dr. Scott>. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, we, um, we have a society where um, you know reading is not a big thing but yeah. i'm saying you know as parents if you need help you know um come come out and and reach out to a counselor in a child link if you need help if you don't have the time to read or if you have some issues reading gathering information just come to child link and and, and we can um try our best to um to assist you you know yeah. or go to uh the therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and counseling and, and, and counseling is is, is is absolutely free yes exactly uh, so, eight to four thirty and one free. of the things that you notice too is that our society is now coming to grips with counseling mm -hmm. they are really mm -hmm. accepting it's okay to be counseled um back to what miss scott was saying you know, when you think of the adolescent age, it's an age where there's a lot of struggle, like we talked about identity. Mm -hmm. And self-esteem is a big thing in adolescent stage. It's so huge. It's a big part of the world, self-acceptance. Um, either you're in the in-group or the out-group, and as a result of that, you'll do anything to get in that in-group. Mm -hmm. um, empowerment is so important for parents to do with their mm -hmm. child also at this stage. You empower them enough to know that they're individual and you are you and you can be the best of you. And a lot of parents, you know, they, they, they refuse to do that. Your sister didn't do this, so why I didn't get this problem with your sister? How is it that I'm having this problem now with you? And they say that a lot. And, and I, I, I've, I've worked with young people who struggled a lot in being compared to a sibling. And, you know, in terms of their mindset, like mm -hmm. what Miss Paul, Miss, Miss Wall, sorry, would have said. And they level up thinking. And I have met an amazing nine-year-old lately. And 
she would say directly i think my mother has some issues and miss i don't understand what is the issue but maybe you can help her as a counselor so i'm like okay so um what do you think are some of those issues miss she never listens <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know she's well spoken and so brave and bold and a parent might say it, you are you poor mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you know but um we, we're living in a change society and it's developing rapidly yeah and our children are getting abreast with it. And I'm happy that you said that parents need to educate themselves. A lot of parents, in fact, they don't want to educate themselves. They say, look, this technology thing is not for me. I've heard a lot of parents say that. Your child is in the technological stage. Age, I would say, sorry. And as a result of that, that child, is mo you need to get abreast a, a with it. And you need to move it. You but need to educate yourself on this. Parents are sometimes, I find that they don't want to put in that effort to educate themselves. You know, do this thing. I, I, I found the parent, you um, text this thing to, to this person to me, <laughs> asking the small child. And that child gets on that phone and you have no idea. Um, I, in the past, I had a, there was a case where a nine-year-old appeared very innocent and seduced a 40-year-old. And he had no idea that it was a nine-year-old. She was texting with him. And he had no idea that this was a nine-year-old until the conversation went off a little. And some of her language that she was using, rec he recognized that this is not an adult. When he got to the bottom of it, he knew she had even posted pictures of her little developed bud down there. Mm. It just goes to show what's happening in our mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. And she did this every time she was in her bedroom. Her mother was so busy that she hadn't paid enough attention to her. She said, okay, and we feed them with the technology. Mm -hmm. That will keep them quiet. And you know, they do that and they're learning these different things and you know, they're watching this pornography and so on. You need to know exactly that too. You help parents to understand yeah. that. You need to know what your child is involved in. All right? Um, so um, I want to touch on the aspect too of what is it that you think parents can do as role models to automatically affect or educate our adolescent in this phase so a parent might not be educated like you said but a simple model that you play in front of that child every day so you know the, the behavior that you model in front of them mm -hmm. is effective enough so what do you think are some of these things that they can do some of our parents out there that might be listening might be struggling in this area you might be a single parent and you might not be home usually but there are some simple steps or things that they might be able to do in the home that might say to your child indirectly hey you, you at least you, you're getting a lesson indirectly through my behavior yeah. so how is it that i mean anyone at this time can probably say at this time what is it that they can do because the the, the process um because adolescence is really a process yeah the stage um because it's so comprehensive, mm -hmm. we can talk about um, the issue. Be because you know you're getting pubic hair and so on. Yeah. It's a matter of a hygiene. That too. And parents can try to teach their children. You you know you be clean. You yeah. know you dress nicely. You know you spray nice clothes and so right. on with your girls and Good let them you know, exactly. brush your teeth and so on. In addition to to that, to you know to touch a bit on, on the emotional and psychological um, part of it because mm -hmm. you know you can talk talk about things like depression and, 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 mm -hmm. and, and so on. Um, I want to encourage um, parents, both mm -hmm. male, you know, both fathers and mothers, yeah. to be respectful to each other. Mm -hmm. um, because in most cases, if a, because adolescents too, the they, they, they stage it tackles, you know, psychological, yeah. um, in terms of depression and so on. Mm -hmm. So when a father or mother abuses the, the, the other, that too, yeah. um, is ammunition for the child to, to use to say that's okay as well. Yeah. Because like again, a child stung uh, at the school, a this young man, brilliant, he is. But one of the things that shocked me, he said we, we, we were trying to link uh, gender-based violence to, um, we were trying to link gender-based violence to the topic. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to say that you must be respectful and so on. Yeah. And he said, um, I said, you must be respectful to girls. Yeah. He said, no. <laughs> if they slip up, they're going to get it. <laughs> oh I, sa God. I said, but um, wow. let's say in the home, wow. your mother slips up. Mm -hmm. What will happen there? Yeah. He said, well, she if she slips it. up, she's going to get it. it. Oh, so wow. I said wow. that to say that 
it's what you see yeah you know it, it it comes back to what you portray in front of them exactly. and because that that adolescent stage you're so impressionable yeah and everything you see you 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 tend to do exactly so like the book good set the the, the good book says yes um i can't remember i know it's proverbs <laughs> yeah um, go ahead 22 <laughs> 14. it uh -huh. says train up a child and where you should go when he's old even not depart from exactly. it um so we need we must try to have those positive uh, yes. values those positive attitudes and let them you know try to practice that Excellent. i would say so um role model speaks yeah. for itself you play a role and you expect the child to model what they're seeing in the home so um my first thing would be to lay your ground rules yeah and once you lay the ground rules you cannot go back on those rules consistent. as a parent mm -hmm. you have to be consistent yes. with your rules yes. you can say okay it's just this once i'm going to do it children know exactly how to play parents my yeah. little four-year-old niece today played me i know she was playing me but um i allow it to ride she was like you know we don't have any gum at home because mm -hmm. we were at the shop and she was like you know we don't have any gum at home that's her way of saying i would like to have a gum yes <laughs> and so she continues to use that where, wherever she goes and there's something you know we don't have this at home mm -hmm. so it <laughs> indicates that i would like to have yeah. this in a mm -hmm. in an indirect mm -hmm. way so i'm saying um you know you have to put your rules down and you have to be consistent with your rules if you say okay um you need to get back at home by nine and that child comes back at ten they be have consistent. to deal with the consequences you can't say okay just this once this yes. one time and that's it you have they you have to learn you have to well teach your child or your children you know when we break the rules what happens you're also preparing that child for adulthood yeah. as well mm -hmm. you know so what you teach your 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 children in your home that's exactly what they will model when they become an an adult too um you know i always have an issue where um you as a parent want to put on the, the little skimpiest thing to go on the road mm -hmm. but then um or to, to attend a meeting at your child's school and then when 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 you show up you know the children say oh look i i see sean and mom bum bum outside of her yeah. breast outside <laughs> and you know you embarrass the child. that child yes. so you want to that model too. what you mm -hmm. want your child to be as an adult and if you want your child to have a respectable look and to be respected by her peers mm -hmm. or his peers you have to um dress appropriately when attending that child's school and before um there weren't any rules to have a dress code to enter a school but now there are rules yes. for parents yes. to to enter um the school compound yeah. you know and so it's important for parents for for all um you know our, our homes to have rules rules are important very important. you know i always say to to my youth you know when you see a door you don't just enter because you're living there you have to knock and you wait for an answer even in your own home yeah. you know because when you're in the working environment you don't just see a door closing you enter the room and i always tell my youth i'm not just counseling you or working with you because this is my job i'm preparing you for um for adulthood and so you know i'm when when i move off the scene i must leave a positive impact in your life it's not something that i'm doing because i'm being paid to exactly. to do it you exactly. know so put your rules down and remain consistent with your rules yes and one of the things too i i working with children you find that a lot of children have already assessed their parents more than the parents would have mm -hmm. assessed them. They know their parent more than the parent knows them. Mm -hmm. And so they're able to tell you more about what their parent would do, finish a sentence for their parent, and they would be able to say, Miss, my mother's not like that. And when you ask the parent, they have no idea. They have not made their child a study or have even studied their children and recognized in, indeed that they are individual okay. and each person you know you have each child is different you have to make them a study mm -hmm. you know what this child would do what this child wouldn't do you know what level of parenting technique you use you need to use on this child mm -hmm. as opposed to the other child so miss Scott, just to you know we're wrapping up here so um, maybe you can give us your last bit on this part um, in the um, role model aspect of parenting well basically miss 
wall. Um, yes, Smith would have said all <laughs> oh, Okay. Um, the only thing I can add is mm-hmm. something that I would always hear my father say, which yes. is that your success as a parent is determined by when you are not there, when you are no longer in the picture, what yes. your child does in your absence. Exactly. And if you do the basics, yes. like lay the ground rules, yeah. um, and you are the child's parent and not yes. their friend, you re- and you remember your role as parent, and that child knows their role as a child, right? This transition period of adolescence yeah. would be a very smooth one because yeah. um we can all agree it's a difficult time you're no longer a child exactly um you're not an adult as yet yes. um it's very confusing for the child because i i would recall many times you know one parent might say you know you're you think you're a big woman now and then at the uh-huh. other hand you're like it's you're me. you're you're ch- you're still, still a child. Like, yes, you're, like, uh-huh. but so you're confused not, in the rule exactly. So <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, once everybody knows their role, exactly, right, and plays their role, and plays their role right. correctly, it should be a smooth process. And again, as I said, education is very key. Very and, important. Um, very important. and I like what was said about being a role model because recently there was an ad that is currently on the television about two parents arguing yeah the child is hearing Mm -hmm. or listening to what is going on Mm -hmm. and then the child goes out into the playroom and mimics the same mimics the same behavior behavior. the same language and everything right and you know if a teacher or some other adult would come and say you know what is wrong with this little child yeah like why are why are they doing this and not knowing and then the parent themselves might be very upset about mm-hmm. it not knowing that their behavior directly influenced exactly what has happened exactly so basically all, all was said right. as it really it's so old thank you so models. much thank you so much um um we're gonna wrap up here but i'm gonna give each person one minute to say a quick closing remark and send a message to our parents out there as it relates to the adolescent phase and i'll start it's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, all that I have to say is mm-hmm. that parents make sure that you educate yourselves yeah. on this whole process, uh-huh. right? Um, talk to your children, yes. share with them, yes, right? Because um, if they don't get the inf- it's better that they get the information from you than they go to go elsewhere and get that information. Because as you rightly said, the internet is now. It's to everybody, mm-hmm. and if um, they go there, and mm-hmm. if they go and they look for the information unguided, mm-hmm. right, they will not reap the full benefits of learning and discovering new things during this period. Right. So it's a very imp- education it's for me very is very key thank for you. this thank part you. of your life. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Um, so good evening, parents. Um, I want to say to you. Um, that you must understand that your role is crucial. Um, you must understand that you are the first teachers, uh, the first persons who your children are going to learn from. Yes. And you must understand that whatever you do and whatever you say um, would impact and would shape uh, their lives, especially in that adolescence uh, stage because that stage is impressionable. Yes. Um, what I want to say is that you must love, you must support, you must communicate, and you must you know, guide uh, and all those things will add up and they will complement each other to ensure that your uh, child or your children will turn out to be uh, persons uh, that will contribute meaningfully to society Thank because of their behavior. So Thank you. Thank I hope you, that helps. Ms. Wong? Okay, so to parents, teachers, and everyone that work with um, children, I want us to know that children are their own individual, so let's not compare them to a sibling or just a neighbor's child. And let us, um, you know, work together in supporting our children, in in giving them or feeding them um, the right information and to help make them better um, and productive citizens of this beautiful country, Diana. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you you with us tonight. Um, (laughs) Well, we want to invite you to join us on our next program, which is the 14th of October. It's... No, it's November, sorry. <laughs> That's the 14th of November. And it's step-by-step parenting program. That will be our fifth episode, and we invite all the public to join us. And you must be educated in some way. So we, we ask that you look at the program, and I'm sure there are questions that would have already been answered today. 
you know, reach out to any one of the services offered this evening. You might have an issue that you're struggling with. It's okay that you can reach out to our panelists of professionals. Um, but we thank we we are so happy to have them tonight, and we're happy that you joined us this evening. So, to all Guyana, we say good night and see you on the 14th of October. November. Thank you. November, sorry, November. <laughs> on the 14th of November. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. <laughs>